Morning, everybody. Morning. Should just leave it to Bethan, really. That says everything. You've got the whole story there. Let's pray together. Father, we do pray as we look at and think about this familiar story that you reach us afresh and stir our hearts to follow you even closer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now life is full of choices. What we eat, what jobs we do, what clothes we wear, and life and death important things like which football team we support. Making choices can be difficult and we can upset people by some of the choices that are made. For example, quite a while ago now, our youngest granddaughter was really miffed when Adam Peaty was voted off Strictly Come Dancing and she's never quite got over it. Which of the following would you choose at a party? Jelly or trifle? Jelly? Anybody jelly? Or trifle? <laughs> On the playground, which one would you have done? The preferred the slide? Or the swings? Mm, pretty fair. At the fair, candy floss or toffee apples? Candy floss, well, candy floss wins there. Now this one, I, I, there's no question really, but would you prefer to be at school or on holiday? Everybody, 100%. Now then, a piece of chocolate or a piece of fudge? Fudge, fudge, fudge. Right, fudge over here and here. There we go. With the price of electricity going up, it'd be really nice to buy someone a candle for their birthday, <laughs> especially if it was your mum. Now, you might have a choice. Would you buy a nice one like this? Or even nicer one? like this. Yeah. It's only been lying, lying down in my shed for quite a while, but it is all right. It's okay. I'll put those up there. If you made a choice of the wrong one, she might be quite upset. And sometimes we can upset our friends by making friends with somebody they don't get on with or someone they don't like. They might even say, we're not your friend anymore. Has that ever happened to you? Let's walk with Jesus through Jericho as he makes a choice which really upsets the majority of the people there. Follow along in Luke 19 verses 1 to 10. Now Jericho, in the time of Jesus, was one of the most beautiful cities in the area. The old Jericho, which we read about in the Old Testament, being destroyed in the time of Joshua, was just a ruin about a mile away. This place bustled with trade and pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem. It was surrounded by lush date palms, balsam trees and rose gardens, orchards of almonds, cherries, pomegranates and oranges. There were fields of wheat and maize that ripened earlier than anywhere else. What a place to live, almost as good as Stanton by Dale. The Bible tells us elsewhere that Jesus had set his face towards Jerusalem and the cross. And that was less than two weeks away. Jesus knew what he had come to do, to die in our place. Now when we're on a mission, or have an important job to do, we don't want to be interrupted and we say, can't do that, I'm busy. We could learn a thing or two from Jesus, who always had time for everyone who had a need. On his way into Jericho, a blind man who was sitting by the roadside had shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The people with Jesus told the man to be quiet, but Jesus took time out from his journey and gave that man his sight. Jesus wasn't intending to stop in Jericho. The Bible tells us he was just passing through. There was a man called Zacchaeus. The first few verses of Luke 19 tells us that he was the chief tax collector. In our meals with Jesus so far, we've already met Matthew Levi, who collected taxes before he met Jesus. 
but the title chief probably means that Zacchaeus had other tax collectors working for him. And in Jericho, there would be lots of taxes to collect for the Romans and for Herod, because it was a customs post where goods passed through, a bit like Calais or Dover. And because of the many things that grew there and were transported elsewhere too, many pilgrims passed through there on their way to Jerusalem. So it tells us that Zacchaeus was wealthy. Taxes for Rome, taxes for Herod, and some for Zacchaeus. Lovely juggle. He would have been hated, and I guess have no real friends. He wanted to see who Jesus was. It doesn't tell us why. We can only guess. It might have been that he'd heard that Jesus had accepted Matthew, but we don't know. Now, because Zacchaeus was of average height and everyone else was tall, he couldn't see Jesus because of the crowds. Well, surely, one foot six, one foot six, one foot, one foot, one foot six meters, five foot six is normal. I did wonder when I was chosen to do this talk if there any, if there was any hidden reason behind it. I think there might have been. Of course, Zacchaeus was short, and so am I. And I know from personal experience how difficult it can be to see when I'm in a crowd. Now, Zacchaeus did a strange thing. He ran. It was very undignified for a man to, man to run in those days, especially a government official like little Zac. Now, are we now, or were you, good at climbing trees? Anybody? I know Sylvia was very good at climbing, she tells me. I used to love climbing trees as a boy, and there were certain trees around where I lived which were especially good to climb. I used to say when looking at a tree, I bet it's a climber. Now, I'm not so sure I'd be able to do it today, but I can watch a tree surgeon at work for hours in sheer envy. Zacchaeus ran ahead on the route that Jesus would take and climbed a sycamore fig tree, a type of tree whilst it, which in those days would have been a climber for the, all the small boys in Jericho because the roots would have stood out from the ground and the branches would have been a perfect height for climbing. But a grown man in his robes climbing a tree? How demeaning. But Zacchaeus was desperate. He really wanted to get a glimpse of Jesus. Perhaps like so many people today who don't attend church but wonder, what's this Jesus thing all about? Can he really help me? Now, I need some help for this, but I've got a sycamore fig tree. You've got to use your imagination. Is that there on the on the? Um, yeah, I think that's it. But I need a Zacchaeus. We've already got a volunteer for Zacchaeus. A bit of indecision now, yeah. So, Zacchaeus. It's the wrong way around. <laughs> Don't worry about that. So, Zacchaeus climbed a sycamore fig tree, but in these days, we have to be a bit more health and safety wise. You wouldn't have had one of those then, so you better put that on. Yeah, okay. And it doesn't really look like a tree, does it? So, you better hold that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I've fallen down a ladder in Stanton by Dale Beltown, but I've never really fallen down a tree. But I expect that Zacchaeus nearly did when he heard Jesus say, Jesus, when he heard, just a minute, when he heard Jesus say, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Thank you very much. Oh, just a minute. Hearing this, Zacchaeus was sad, angry, upset. No, it tells us in verse 6 that he welcomed Jesus gladly. But the crowd at this point began to mutter and grumble and moan. You see, Zacchaeus' name actually meant pure, but they knew he was far from pure. They said, 
he, Jesus, has gone to the house of a sinner. Zacchaeus have more than likely cheated and stolen from some of them, and they were outraged. But Jesus saw his potential, just as he sees yours and mine. When Zacchaeus realised that even he was accepted by Jesus, his life changed instantly. And he said, Lord, Lord, here and now I will give half my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Wow, so the crowd are really happy now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Big round of applause for my sister. He didn't keep the rest of his money, you see. He gave it away to the poor. He just didn't keep a bit for himself. He was prepared to get, get rid of all of it. Legally, he'd only have to pay a fifth added on. And Jesus then said, So today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. Why did he say that? A son of Abraham. Well, because of Zacchaeus' involvement with the Romans, he was considered a non-Jew by the Orthodox Jews there. Remember at the start of the passage, when it told us that Zacchaeus was wealthy, and we know that he hadn't lived up to his name of pure. In the previous chapter, chapter 18, Jesus met with another wealthy man, who had kept all the commandments since he was a boy. He was okay, he was good. But Jesus said he lacked one thing, which was to sell all his possessions and give the money to the poor. Sadly, he loved his wealth more than he loved Jesus. Here, without asking, Zacchaeus showed that his encounter with Jesus had changed his life, and everyone could see it. And Jesus concludes by saying, For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Zacchaeus didn't have to go running and fall at the feet of Jesus. Jesus knew his name. As the poem said, Jesus came looking for him. If something's lost, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist anymore. It means that it's lost just in the wrong place. You may have wandered away from God in your life and be in the wrong place. But even today, Jesus knows your name and longs for a closer relationship. Remember these candles? When the light of Jesus touches our lives, no matter what we look like, what we've done, we can reflect his light. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We thank you that Jesus comes looking for us even today and wants to enrich our lives and make us generous and Lord with his love. So Lord, we pray we receive that love even afresh today. In Jesus' name. Amen.